Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Thomcraft for Minecraft 112.2. Today I'm going to be covering the basics of alchemy. So let's get into this. We have already unlocked basic alchemy and alchemical metallurgy due to my previous bit by bits. We're going to continue on from there. Starting here, you have many different things on the side. Yes, you can make nitor. I have demonstrated this. It's good for, well, not burning things down, but also keeping things heated up. Uh, so I recommend you do so. There are some other things that you could do potentially though with this. Uh, there are of course V-crystals that you've, uh, you're able to make in the uh, cauldron already just by throwing ingredients in your crucible and then using your uh, slivers that I may have here, your quartz slivers on there to draw them out at the ratio of every two essentia will get you one v vis crystal. On top of that you have glass files which can be used to store liquid essentia. It cannot be used to actually pull essentia out of the crucible, but it can be used to put essentia into the uh, crucible. Uh, now also you have essentia filters which are mostly a crafting ingredient and morphic resonators which are also a crafting ingredient. So you can just kind of ignore those for now. But let's go on over here to hedge alchemy because it would be nice to actually get an ever full urn which is going to constantly keep refilling your crucible instead of you having to uh, keep bucketing up here in the middle of some kind of crafting recipe. So let's try heading over in that direction. Hedge alchemy. As with usually the case, you'll need some kind of observation and uh, magic tallow. Magic tallow in this case is made by throwing in uh, some kind of ignis ingredient as well as an activator of the rotten flesh. Every one of these will get you at least one magic tallow. Of course if you have more of these and more activators uh, then you'll be able to get multiples in one crafting. Now something else you should be aware of is that there's also elementum over here. Before we can do the uh, one, we can take a look at this, complete, which is just, of course, an observation item. I click on here and you can now make elementum with some basic items. Now the reason I'm bringing the elementum recipe up as well as the tallow recipe is because you can actually do both at the same time. And in fact, elementum is a really good ingredient. Uh, if you use one piece of coal to smelt, let's say, uh, wood or some type of ore, you'll get eight results. Using elementum, you'll get three times that, in this case, 24. So it is uh, somewhat beneficial in order to make elementum. Well, you can make some elementum for yourself and get a whole bunch of the, uh, the tallow that you may need in the future at the same time. So first, let's cover a little bit about elementum before I jump into that. And that is uh, if you're to just make a simple recipe of elementum, which is going to be, I believe, uh, 10 potentia, 10 ignis, as well as uh, a little bit of perdicio. You'll need five perdicio. If you toss uh, like a piece of coal or charcoal, they're the same in this case. I'm just using the coal to represent something you toss in first and the charcoal to represent the activator in these recipes. If you toss in coal and gunpowder and then toss in like either charcoal or coal as the activator, you would get elementum. Same thing with coal and rotten flesh. These are two very simple items. But then, of course, you'd have to use a lot of quartz slivers in order to get these, uh, the Vise crystals back out and uh, prevent yourself from getting a lot of, like, uh, flux in the area. And with this recipe down here, if you go with the gunpowder recipe, you'd get a little bit of fibrous taint and a bunch of different crystals. You'd get alchemia, perdicio, ignis, all crystal, Vise crystals that would be useful, as well as humanus invictus. But I would say that the bottom row is probably going to be more common. Now up here, and you'll also get a little one flux off of this and you get two flux off of this crafting. That's just one. And that's to make one elementum to get you three coal pieces worth. So it's like eh, three ingredients. The gunpowder is not exactly easy to come by. Rotten flesh is somewhat easy to come by with, with the quantity of zombies. So this is kind of okay, but there are better ways of doing this. Now, if you want, there is a uh, probably the easiest materials for a good yield of elementum is going to be two coal, two rotten flesh and two charcoal, and that will get you two elementum, uh, uh, therefore allowing you to get even more. You're still doing six items in for six items out, but at least uh, you're, you're not spending as much quartz. In this case, you're getting Victus and uh, Humanus would be your results. But I recommend if you're going to go with this, uh, just for the elementum, mind you, no, we're, we're coming back around to the tallow, don't worry. You go with two coal, two redstone, and two gunpowder. Uh, and four charcoal. This will get you four elementum. 
plus it will get you a bunch of uh, alchemia as a si as a byproduct if you you know make sure to take all this out and neither of these recipes will have any kind of flux results if you're uh, fast with the quartz sli slivers therefore allowing you to uh, kind of maximize the amount of uh, stuff you get without having any kind of flux buildup and this will get you four so it's two four six plus another four will be ten items will get you twelve equivalent coal results or four elementum so this one i highly recommend as my preferred method lowest amount of materials for the most yield of elementum but if you are doing this to try and get yourself some magic talent i have a process to it it's a little bit complicated i'm, I'm going to be honest here but you toss in four coal two gunpowder and then follow it up with four charcoal now the thing is if you have coal or char charcoal in your uh recipe for tossing into your crucible you can get things a little mixed up if you toss it uh, one and then the other because remember those are activators so i recommend that if you're using an activator as something uh for in the recipe that you start with it therefore it it's less likely to uh, activate the uh, the results that you want and start messing you up but in this case you're tossing these in activating those and you'll get yourself the uh, four elementum and with the resulting items that you have left over you've got like some alchemia in here which you know you, you'll probably need to pull out in the end but the tallow needs a bunch of ignis and if you toss these in you'll have a bunch of ignis left over toss in about uh, 18 rotten flesh and then you'll you'll probably run out of water at that point if you've got a full uh, crucible then so you need to refill it toss in two more rotten flesh and you'll get yourself 20 magic tallow and all you'll have left over is five uh, alchemia crystals and no flux provided that you're timely on this so you get four elementum 20 magic tallows which you can use for making candles which will be very good in infusion if not just lighting up the area uh, that you live in Okay, so I've given myself all these items so that I can actually process this. But the best way for me to demonstrate this is by briefly jumping over into another area. And that is by going back to your fundamentals and choosing Discovering Artifice. At this point, you do have access to the Goggles of Revealing. I highly recommend that you make these, as I have. All right, so I've got my goggles on. So now when I throw an ingredient in, in here and I look at the crucible, I can actually see the results of what is in the crucible. And this will make things a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to throw these things in one at a time rather than in group amounts because it, it tends to be a little bit better, especially when you're using things like activators. All right, so here we go. You can see that the cauldron is boiling. In fact, I've, I've uh, kind of gotten really close to it so you can see better what is going on and when the cauldron or the crucible becomes empty. I just filled it and it is boiling. So this is a fresh crucible. It is not low in any way. I toss in the coal first, then the gunpowder, toss in my activators one at a time. Then I throw in a whole bunch of rotten flesh and I start getting back a whole bunch of good stuff here. There we go. And now I am out. I need to refill this. Keep going with the rotten flesh. There we go. And then I just quartz sliver the rest out. And I'm good to go. I still have a little bit left in here, but there's no flux left in here. There's no, no other Essentia, anything. So I can just shift click it and then I can get myself some fresh water and refill this and I'm good to go. So there you go. I got four Elementum, 20 Magic Tallow, five Alchemia Crystals left over. And I now am able to complete this Hedge Alchemy in the Thaumonomicon. And you think, all right, well, it, it goes a little further. With the tallow, yes, you can make yourself all sorts of candles, which are going to be useful for infusion. So this is something you will need in the latter. Uh, but you also have other things like gunpowder, slime balls, uh, ink sacks, and glowstone dust that you will need. In fact, I recommend that you just get two of each of these items, and then you'll be good to go. So if you look on here, this is actually a way of uh, kind of transmuting things. Put one item in plus some other ingredients and you get two gunpowder. The thing is, gunpowder's ingredients are 10 Ignis, 10 Perdicio, and 5 Alchemia. So if you have a way of producing uh, those items without gunpowder, then you can actually produce gunpowder from something else. But in this case, I'm just going to put that in, activate it, and get it back. Same thing with the slime ball, put it in get it back ink sack put it in get it back glowstone put it in get it back and there you go you have completed that next chapter which is actually really really simple now you do have another one and that is going to be clay which should be very basic in this case it requires five aqua and dirt to activate and the easiest way that i have for that is with a water bottle 
and two pieces of dirt. So therefore I toss in the water bottle, and then I toss in a piece of dirt, and another piece of dirt. And then I don't have any flux left over, and I get two pieces of clay. Completed. So this next one seems a little bit strange actually, and that's string. String is five bestia and one fabrico. And if you look, that is exactly what's on string. But the activator for it is going to be wheat. So therefore, string, wheat, and you get string back. I know, it's kind of a net loss, but you can make things from other things is the idea here. So let's continue on, shall we? All right, a cobweb. Not exactly the easiest thing to see here or make. So how would I go about getting cobweb? In this case, I'm going to keep it simple and just say toss in an oak door. Reason being, it has some of the, uh, the, the trap symbol on there. I believe it's vinculum. And it should be all right. You can always use uh, crystals to absorb everything else and just have one flux left over. So I just find that to be one of the easier things to do. Then I can pull this back out and get myself a few more of these crystals and I'm, I'm good to go. Now, last one but not least, the lava bucket. Uh, well, actually, let's take a look at this. Lava bucket, 15 Ignis, 5 Terra, and the activator is a bucket, which makes sense, actually. That, that works really nicely. You throw that in, it comes back out filled with lava. So how do I get Ignis and Terra? There are many ways of doing this, and I recommend if you just want to get this undone or get this uh, research completed, you get yourself a magma block, which has 10 and 5. And you're going to end up with, uh, you, you just grab some of your uh, V's crystals that you find out in the world for Ignis, which is probably going to be the simplest way. And then you throw in a bucket. So as you can see here, I have a magma block. Just throw that in. Five V's crystals and a bucket. Oh, get ourselves a lava bucket back. So therefore, you may use a little bit of the stuff that you find uh, and you've got in your table or something like that, but it's just the simplest way that I've got for, for progressing past this as quickly as possible uh, so that you can get past hedge alchemy. And you can complete that. And there we go. It now allows us to continue on to the ever full urn, which is going to be very key for continuing any kind of basic alchemy and keeping it full at all times. Okay, the ever full urn. Now that uh, you may have done a little bit of theory on fundamentals, which can be a little bit challenging to try and study that specifically. Uh, also, uh, observation on alchemy, plate, and the ever full urn. Now, it requires a flower pot, 30 aqua, 10 fabrico, and 10 terra to make one. I recommend that you use the super secret double bubble urn recipe. It gets you two, and at the cost of one flux. It'll be uh, six water bottles, 20 cobblestone slabs, or some kind of uh, stone slab that gives you one terra. As you can see, the water bottles here give you 10 each. And one crafting table, because that gets you a ton of that Fabrico as a primary additive. Uh, and then you end up with a little bit of Herba left over with some quartz slivers, and only one flux is created from this. And you end up with two Everfull urns, which can be useful in multiple applications. So therefore, I recommend you might as well have two anyway. Okay, with your recipe all set and ready... I have my crucible already bubbling. I toss in the water bottles quickly just by pressing Q, throw in all the cobblestone slabs, one crafting table, and a flower pot. And there we go. I forgot, I need two flower pots. Quickly, there we go, and then I can just quartz sliver everything that's left. And there we go, only one herba left in here that I can just get rid of. There we go, just one flux into the atmosphere. No worries about one flux at a time. And I now have an ever full urn, which is fantastic and glorious. I, I highly recommend you get one of these as soon as you can, because it's just going to make your crafting that much easier. Uh, it's best to keep this within two blocks of your crucible and probably on the same plane. You might be able to have it up one level, but uh, you're going to want it to be able to do this so that it can it can do this automatically. Look at this. It's just automatically filling things. It's It's a beautiful thing. Then you can keep your other one for future use. Okay, now that we have an ever full uh, way of continuing on with any kind of alchemy, we can move along. We've already done Elementum now by crafting it with the uh, tallow. We want to actually start smelting some Essentia, and that is going to require this here. One of each of your base Vis crystals needs to be in your inventory. Not a problem. I should have one of these in every one of my sections here so that I can just take one of each of those. And that should be easy enough to do. And I, there we go. Complete. Very easy. And it used them all up 
uh, just as you can see here, so you don't get to put them back or anything like that. And then you've got a whole bunch of your compound vase crystals. Compound vase crystals, there's a lot of them. Uh, the, the, this is the ones that are made up of two uh, aspects. And in order to get those, I've come up with a, a simpler way of doing it. You can toss each of these into your crucible and take them out as you toss them in one at a time. To get vitreous, I recommend a couple glass panes, lux, you just use a torch. If you toss in two torches, then you'll get an even amount and you can actually get uh, all of the uh, products back. Otherwise, this one here, uh, the vitreous, will get you just one beast crystal. Then you've got modus, which of course gets, you know, that trap door uh, will work pretty good. And you can toss a couple of those in and then just, you know, get everything back. It, it doesn't hurt to have a whole bunch of extra beast crystals, I have to say. So you're going to need a lot of, of nether quartz to continue on with alchemy, that's for sure. Uh, now, metallum, the cheapest way I know of is just with a couple iron ingots. Then you've got uh, your uh, mortus and your victus, which you will need. In order to do those, I recommend a bone or a couple, and then you don't have any uh, flux going into the atmosphere. Then your jellum is going to be a couple snowballs. We'll get you one of those. And the last one here, you, there's a few others that you can get by getting this one. And by that, I mean permu permutatio is not an easy one to come by without getting a whole bunch of byproducts on it. And the one that I, I was able to come up with that uses the least amount of uh, nether quartz and still gets you some of your other beast crystals that you'll need for compound aspects is a dropper, which if you look here, there's 26 terra on there, but there is 10 permutatio, 7 potentia, 5 mach machina, 5 vacuos, and 5 potentia, etc., you can toss in a couple if you really want to, uh, but there's the, it uses at least three nether quartz just to get all the uh, the beast crystals back out so that you don't have uh, any or very little flux left. If you toss in two of these, then you can get you know uh, more, or toss in one, get as much out as you can, then toss in another, and you should be good to go. But uh, this, this will get you your permutatio, your potentia, and your vacuos all in one uh, dropping into the crucible here. In this case, I am not going to actually go through all that I already did in my testing. I'm just, I have them in my inventory now though, and I'm able to complete this. And of course, I need to do a little bit of observation and make myself an Essentia smeltery in order to uh, continue on, which is made with a brass plate, a crucible, which you'll probably want to make another one so that you still have access to your original uh, furnace and some cobble, plus a little bit of vis in the uh, area and your vis crystal. So I think that's pretty much going to cover it for today's bit by bit on basic alchemy. If you guys enjoyed this, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others. And if you uh, want to support the mischief, we always have links in the description below. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.